Hi everyone, and welcome back to Crown City Trawlers. Today's episode, I'll show you how to change the oil on your Ford Lehman 120 marinized engine. Here we are looking aft, um, and we'll be working on the port side of the engine for this one. Before you start opening anything up, go ahead and run your engine for about 10 minutes to heat up the oil so it's nice and viscous and will run out easily. So the first thing you want to do uh, over here on the port side is you're going to want to check your oil level. Um, so this is something you should do every time you take the boat out, every time you start the engine. Uh, but I like to check it as well before changing the oil just to make sure that when we started we got things in the right place. Uh, that way for your measurements for how much to put back in you know that you're, uh, you're doing things right. So this is your uh, dipstick right here. Uh, I'm going to set the camera up and show you how we check that. Okay, so here we are. I'll show you how we check the uh, dipstick here on a Ford Lehman. I presume this is about the same on most marinized engines. Um, so if we look here, I don't know if you'll be able to read it or not, but you see the normal min and max notches. There's max, there's min. Um, so because this is a marinized engine and it's not set up on the same plane that it would be when it was in a tractor, um, if you look, this is if you know on a tractor it'd be flat, but on a boat it's like this because we've got the shaft going out the back. So uh, if you look down here, we've got two different scratches that have been marked on there. Um, so that's how we're gonna know our proper fill levels for the marinized version of the Ford Lehman. Um, so don't be concerned if if you're always looking at this mark when you're running or after you fill it up and then you just can't get it there. It keeps dropping. It keeps dropping. Um, if you're at this, this scored, you know, it looks like kind of a handmade job, which it is, um, you know that's where you're supposed to be, um, which makes sense because if you're flat and it fills to here and then you tip it back, it's going to drop just a little bit. All right, so here we are. If you can tell, we're right between those two scored marks, those hand scored marks, which tells me that uh, we're right, right about where we want to be. That's pretty good. Um, these engines will kind of have their own happy level um, so you might find that you know you're consistently seeing that it's it's closer to the min than to the max and that's okay um, as long as you're not falling below the minimum level um, or seeing that smoke coming out with your exhaust you can you can trust that she's doing things right and you're not burning too much oil now that we're satisfied uh, with the current oil level in the engine uh, I'll go ahead and show you the different parts that we're going to be working with um, for the draining and refilling of the oil today. So up top here, this is your oil reservoir and your fill cap. So we can go ahead and pop that off whenever we want. Set it somewhere safe. Um, but I actually recommend keeping it on until it's time to fill, just so you don't have anything fall in there, any gunk or whatever. Um, so that's what it looks like in there. To me, the first time I looked in here, I thought, wow, that looks uh, that looks kind of dry. I feel like it should be filled up higher than that. Um, but again, remember, you got to trust your dipstick that if, if it says it's at the right level, you're at the right level. So put that back on here. Now, if we come down, um, see here, I've got a pretty cool, I think it's a Jabsco oil pump. Um, so this makes life a lot easier. You don't have to crawl up underneath the engine block to, to let it gravity drain. And it makes it a lot faster too, because it'll pump it right out of there. Um, if you look right here, there's a, a flow direction selector. Um, so make sure you, you look at your alignment and you've got it flowing out, not back in. Uh, I'm not sure what would happen if you went the wrong way, but um, if you turn your pump on and you realize, what the heck, man, I'm not, nothing's coming out check that switch and make sure it's going the right way. Also, if you're not getting flow, check your uh, your valve down here. Um, if that's closed, like it is now, you're not going to get anything moving through there. So then if you look, that, uh, that line goes all the way forward um, to the front of the engine there. I guess kind of on the side even. Um, and that's where your lower drain point actually happens. Again, like I said, much easier to do it this way. Got this nice big long hose. Um, you can you can put your bucket 
or I'll show you what I do. I use the the empty cans from previous oil changes to uh, just to keep it all in a measurable quantity and nice and clean. And then you can just take those to your gas station or uh, fuel fuel station wherever you go to dispose of them. So it's uh, it's now time to actually drain the oil. Um, so I'll show you what we do for that. So I've got the upper fill cap cracked so that air can come through the system. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is centered right now so it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to open up this valve here. There we go. And I'm going to make sure this hose is in my dunnage can. So just a kind of a general word of caution for doing this is don't be in a hurry. Um, if you don't know if you have enough time to change your oil, you probably don't. I always try to allot enough time to change the oil and also clean up a major oil spill. Um, haven't had to do that yet, but it's always smart to just make sure you give yourself enough time in case something bad happens. Um, you don't want to spill and then have to leave it and come back. That's not good boatman. boat keeping or good uh, seamanship. So uh, things are all opened up here. I'll go ahead and start her going. I go real easy just to be sure uh, I don't start spraying oil everywhere. I always forget kind of how fast this thing goes, but here we are. And now we've got some flow. It's going. Check it periodically to make sure that you're not about to overfill your bucket. Stop it. Take a look in there. Oops. Yeah, it's time to get gotten kind of black there. And again, these buckets, I like to fill them into the uh, old oil cans. That way I know how many new ones are gonna have to go back in there. So I'm gonna go and get a grease pencil and uh, we're gonna mark that this one is junk uh, so that we don't accidentally put it back in there or something stupid like that. Here you go, this is what I label my junk buckets like, uh, making no mistake in the future to use this stuff, put X's on it, whatever you gotta do. Uh, you don't wanna use the oil that's in there because it's bad. Um, so th I've got three of these, the last one's still down below, um, but uh, what I'll do is once you hear that pump start to kind of go airbound and you think oh, okay I'm, I'm at the bottom I'm done um, I'll stop for a minute clean up my mess a little bit label these guys whatever um, and let any oil that's still in the engine settle down drain to the bottom um, and then after maybe 10 minutes or so I'll hit the pump one last time to make sure we get all those last drips out um, and then we'll go ahead and be ready to fill her back up so now I've got all the oil out of there. Um, got three gallon sized buckets full, so we know that we'll use about three to fill it back up. Um, before we fill though, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna shut this valve again, so that uh, we're, not, we're not gonna just have the oil shoot straight through and then back out. Um, then you can see here, I've got this gravity draining whatever's left in the hose uh, into that Ziploc bag there, um, just to get the last bits of that out. And the last thing we're going to do before we fill back up is uh, we're going to change the oil filter, which is on the starboard side of the engine. Um, there it is, that black Fram filter. Uh, we'll set up and show you a better view of how we change that out. Okay, here's our oil filter setup. Um, I use a bucket. This is just the bottom of a five gallon bucket that was sawed off. Recommend that rather than paying for some fancy thing. Um, you can cut this whatever kind of shapes you want to make sure you can get into tight spaces. Um, really good tool for jobs like this. So uh, the, this is the old one. We're going to take it off. It should only be on there hand tight from before. If you're having issues getting it off, um, I'd be worried. I've never had that problem. But anyways, uh, keep that in mind when you put the new one on as well that you do not want to have to really be cranking on that thing. Um, so just hand tight is fine. So. Here we go, here's the old one. And 
no drips. Did a good job getting everything out of there uh, with the pump earlier. Something to notice is make sure that this, this rubber gasket either stays on here or if it's suctioned on here, you wanna take that off. Um, if you try and put the new one on and you still got the old gasket and the double gasket, you're gonna leak like mad. Um, so just make sure you do that. And uh, we'll take the grease pencil, put X's on this guy too so we don't accidentally try and use it again sometime. And put it in the box that the new one came in, put some X's on there too. That way we won't accidentally use that guy. Now before you put the new one on, um, go ahead and stick your finger in some of your in a you know fresh oil and you're just gonna wet this uh, this gasket so it'll, it won't get too stuck on there. All right, so I just got that wet with a little bit of oil um, and now we're gonna screw it on. Be careful, uh, this should go on really smooth. If it's if it's not easy, you're probably cross-threaded or you got some strip threads or something bad like that. So um, you really shouldn't have to force this guy on here. And boom, hand tight. That's nice and snug on there, no mess. And we got a new oil filter on there. Okay, now time for the good part. Uh, we've got everything drained out and uh, all those valves shut back down below. And it's time to do what makes you and your engine happy again. And we'll fill it back up with your SAE 30 weight oil. Again, uh, this is the same stuff that we used for the injector oil replacement in a previous video. So uh, again, depending where you are, most places SA30 is going to be pretty good for you uh, year-round here in Southern California that works just fine if you're going somewhere really hot or really cold you might consider um, doing seasonal oil changes but um, pretty much here 30 weight does well for us um, and again I use Rotella because that's what previous owner used for over a decade and uh, things have gone really well for this motor and for this boat so I'm gonna keep going that way uh, a lot of guys use different things but as long as it's a uh, straight grade, 30 weight diesel engine oil, you're gonna be just fine. So uh, when we drained it out, we were we saw it go about three gallons coming out. So I've got three gallons to put back in there. I'll I'll go pretty quickly on the first two, and then uh, on the last one, we'll check our dipstick occasionally to see um, just make sure that we don't put too much or too little in there. Um, I got a nice big funnel that I like to use for doing the main engine oil changes. Um, I recommend having separate funnels for different jobs on the boat. That way you don't have any cross-contamination issues. Um, also, before you use your funnel, even if the last time you used it was for an oil change, just make sure that it's clean in there. Um, I'll pass a shop rag through there or whatever, blow some air. Just make sure it's nice and clean so you're not putting any debris into your oil reservoir. Here we go. Just checked our dipstick and uh, we were at the very, very bottom part of the dipstick before you even get to the measurement tick marks. So I uh, definitely need this whole third gallon most likely. Uh, I'm gonna pour about half, let it sit, check it again, and then uh, we'll go from there. Keep adding until we get to that that uh, hand scratched max level. So after three gallons, you can see we're, well, it's running up now, but um, we were just below this, uh, this hand scratch minimum mark. We were right about here. Um, so I'm gonna go to the store and pick up another gallon, which is always smart to have extra oil on board just in case something happens and you need to add oil or you find that you're burning oil and your levels are consistently low. Um, so I'm gonna go buy another jug and get myself to that to that max level so that we're at a, a better running level. Uh, I'm not gonna use the boat until I've got the proper level of oil in there. Um, but that's the procedure for everything. 
uh, I'll go ahead and clean up and put the fill cap back on. Um, at the end of any project, double check all of your alignments, make sure any valves you opened um, are shut if they need to be, and vice versa. Um, check all your hoses and stuff while you're down here as well, any connections, um, and give yourself a good cleanup to, to keep everything in the best order you can.